Yes. <laughs> Joining me now is Xsensor's Chief Technology and Innovation Officer, author of the new book, Human Plus Machine, Reimagining Work in the Age of AI, Paul Doherty. Paul, uh, we laugh at that, but how will artificial intelligence change all business in the next few years? Yeah, it's interesting you started with Sophia. I kicked off a conference that we hosted two weeks ago, and Sophia was my co-host to kick off the conference, and one of the statements she made to me is that uh, she really liked my job and was coming for my job next. So. <laughs> <laughs> talking about this whole human plus machine thing. But the reason we wrote the book was that we found that there wasn't great guidance out there for business leaders on how to apply AI to their business. And we believe we're in an innovation economy. Companies are competing based on innovation. AI is really the alpha trend and the biggest innovation to come in many years. We believe it will transform business and society like electricity and other very fundamental basic revolutions that we've seen. And we wrote the book to really get some guidance around this and to talk about the human impact of the technology. So, how, But how do you manage something well that's so clearly comes after the key distinctive of a human being. I mean, that is what we've been trading on for decades, the ability to reason, to solve complex problems. And now you have a technology that comes at exactly that. Can you manage that well? Or is it always going to be, sorry, you lose, robot wins? Yeah, no, I think you absolutely can. And I think that's what we're trying to reframe is that discussion with the book. You know, it's, it's interesting. This, is, this, this week is the 50th anniversary of the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. Remember the flashing light in the hall, and you know, sorry, I can't do that, Dave. That was that started this this uh, dialogue on AI about AI taking over humans, you know, machines taking over humans, and then we, we focused on games and AI beating humans at games and things like that, AI taking jobs. War games. Is that? Uh, war games. War the games, film the movie, War Games. And then uh, and the beating the, the world's Go Master and chess and yeah. all these other games. And that, that's the wrong discussion to be having. The right discussion is how can technology, how can AI, like any other technology that we've ever invented as humans, augment and improve the way we as humans work? So we talk about the idea in the book that this technology, like any other, can give people superpowers to do their their jobs more effectively and allow us to, you know, to work more productively. You know, more human-like technology, which is what AI is, it's, it's technology approximating human-like capability to sense, think, and do things. And more human-like capability makes us more powerful at what we do. And if machines replace the rote machine-like things that people do, that's fine because it allows us to use our more human-like skills more effectively. Yeah, and, and improve quality of life, safety, if we think about it. I mean, also, if we go into surgeries, we can see it's being used right now. Robotics and AI is is, is being deployed there with precision. I think one of the concerns that we had last year in the marketplace was Elon Musk came out and said, listen, AI is scary. It's going to take over. There's two AI machines that are talking to each other and they cut out the human. Is that the biggest worry that we should be thinking about? No, I, I don't think. I think what we should be thinking about is what's, what's the amazing potential this technology has to transform the way we work and live. You know, some of the work we're doing with AI, just to give you, to give you a sense of it, using it in banks to find criminals faster, anti-money laundering applications, which can sift through tremendous amounts of data and help human investigators find the criminals faster, finding patterns, machines and software finding patterns in data that people couldn't find. In life sciences, using deep learning forms of artificial intelligence to understand disease characteristics and match it to molecular compounds faster to accelerate time to market for drugs. In agriculture, understanding how individual plants grow, what's the optimal mix of nutrients and water and sunlight so we can grow crops more effectively and produce more food. Those are the kinds of problems that AI can solve, which, which makes businesses more competitive and allows us to solve some of these societal issues. Is that issues what that Internet of Thinking is? Because you talk about that. <laughs> yeah, Internet of Thinking. We, we've had this term Internet of Things, which I always hated because it implies you have all this, I these dumb I things. I hate it. You know, yeah. And you know why I hate it even more? Because they use it as kind of one of the plot points in the, the new season of Billions, that show on Showtime. <laughs> yeah. about the obnoxious yeah. hedge fund manager. Yeah. So yeah. they use it use it there. So I said, okay, it's officially done now. Can we not use that? <laughs> but continue. The jump the shark moment, yeah. maybe. But the uh, yeah, the um, internet of thinking, I think, is the right way to, to to view this, which is how do we have more intelligent devices? We have the device Alexa or Google Home in your house, uh, Jibo, many other devices, health implants that's helping epileptic uh, patients with epilepsy avoid seizures by having intelligence to send signals to your brain to avoid seizures. That's the internet of thinking, smart devices integrated into the way we live to help us live our lives more effectively. And again, gets this human plus machine. And, and let me, let me um, bring it into the issue with Facebook and Facebook's responsibility or lack of care in, in protecting people's information. And, mm -hmm. and again, it's not a legal issue. It's, it was essentially their, their policy of how people's information was being used and sold and sliced and diced. 
but talk about that does relate to all businesses and the growing use of technology within those businesses and artificial intelligence in terms of the responsibility mm -hmm. to protect people or the at least the principles that they need to have in place before they venture into kind of these new waters. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Winston Churchill had a quote that, you know, never waste a good crisis. And I think the attention we're seeing on this issue in tech right now is actually good because it's getting us focused on issues that have been around for a while. As you said, Facebook, you know, the, the use of Facebook's information was consistent with their policy. The thing we need to question is what are the policies that we want around access to our information in these times we're moving into? And it's, it, it does impact every company and every industry. Every company is developing digital products across every industry. They're, they're using technology in the same way. And I think it's something for every executive to think about, which is why we have chapters in the, in the book devoted to this issue of responsible AI. What's the right way to use data that's, uh, that provides the right accountability, transparency, fairness, and honesty so we use information in the right way, avoid bias and discrimination, and respect privacy in the right way. And I think this is the canary in the coal mine, so to speak, mm -hmm. of how we deal with those issues and something every executive needs to think about. But, but Paul, it strikes me that on the one hand, you're creating technology whose job it is to pry, to mm -hmm. find connections to get yeah. interior to your life and then the other hand we're talking about these privacy settings to try to stop that if if the technology is made to do that then isn't the problem maybe how we're making the technology why does it have to be so interior to our lives is are we creating the problem that we can't solve with all this protection with all these privacy settings? we're we're, uh, we're probably our own worst enemy in that respect we want these services we want you know people are using Facebook because they get some value out of it as well people are using uh, all these platforms Amazon Google all these platforms because we get value out of them I think it's never going to be perfect but I think we need a better value exchange you know between, and better transparency between people and the way our information is I, I think that, with, that Amazon's different from Facebook in the sense that now is the, the value question. I think people yeah. are sitting back and looking at just social media platforms and saying, how much value has that really added to my life? Yeah. And is it worth handing over data to a company or handing it out to literally the uh, other companies that... Um, and what do I get in return for that? I think that that's something that, that that's, a quite, that's a discussion going on in every household. It is. I think it's a consumer discussion. But one thing we talk about in the book as well is one, one thing we outline on the, back on this jobs point is we believe there's going to be plenty of jobs created in the future. We don't believe in this end of work, end of jobs issue. And even if you look at the numbers right now in the economy, there's 6.8 million unemployed and about 6 million open jobs. The last job reports created was about 400,000 new jobs. The issue is how we prepare people with the skills for the new jobs, which is something we're very focused on, and we're, we're donating the proceeds of the book to reskilling organizations to help address that need. That's amazing. But some of the new jobs we see are things like, we call them sustainers and trainers. They're new roles in organizations mm -hmm. that deal with these issues of how do I treat customers' data? How do I create the right transparency and policies? And it's a whole new organizational structure, new roles, and new, new jobs for people to deal with these issues across industries as this technology rolls well, out. this is all really fascinating. The book is Human Plus Machine, Reimagining Work in the Age of AI. It was great to see you.